thanks for coming today. And um, my name is Darren Alwing. I'm the communications director for ArtLift. The theme for today is, uh, is identity. And, and I, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to go off tangent a little bit and talk about what identity means in the world, because artists, y'all exist in the world, right? Um, and this has been a bad couple of years for identity. Uh, identity has been used, is being used in countries around the world, and particularly here in America. Identity is being used to separate us. It's being used to put people in cages and put people in jail. Um, identity, uh, like I said, it's, 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 it's become a separator. Uh, and what fascinates me about art and artists is all of you make art based on your own identity. It's almost everything that you make uh, really comes out of somewhere deep in yourself. And yet, this thing that you do that's from deep within yourself, uh, you're actually doing it to, to make a bridge. You're, you're, you're making a bridge to me. You're making a bridge to anyone who views your art. And at a very basic level, this is really important. The, one of the sad things we've learned uh, in the United States in this past uh, four or five years is that we've broken off into different tribes, different identities, and we can barely talk to each other anymore. We, we even though we are uh, mostly speaking English, even when we're speaking the same language, we can't seem to communicate. So this exploration of identity and what artists do, where you are being yourself, and yet you're communicating with me and with others, uh, it's, it's an essential thing that we're trying to refigure out what to do. Uh, I've spent my life uh, talking, I talk a lot, um, uh, trying to share ideas and uh, find out through logic and truth what the right answer is. And um, uh, I'm disappointed to learn that that might not be how we uh, find a, a shared identity, at least in this country and, and I think in some others as well. So uh, again, that's pretty thrilling for me to be with people from so many different places. And, uh, and, and, and for you as artists uh, to, to think about how important this is, uh, especially it's become so important in this world to try to find out a way to be who we are, yet create those bridges to, uh, to other people. Uh, we want to start with Carolyn. Are you ready? <laughs> now, I really like your art, Carolyn, and, uh, and I'm going to come in a, in a, in a way that I, I hope is okay with you. Um, I'm old enough to remember when the first Star Wars movie came out, and Obi-Wan Kenobi was saying, the Force is this thing that connects all of us, and it flows through the trees, and it flows through you and me. And when I saw your art, I thought, oh, she's painting the Force. Or, the, or, or, or something like that. So uh, uh, thanks for joining us today. And why don't I turn it over to you and, and why don't you tell us a little bit about your art and where it comes from. And if you have a chance to talk about Cornwall a bit, that'd be really nice. And then we'll have some questions at the end. I'm, my name is Caroline. Um, I'm much older than any of you, but never mind. that doesn't matter. That's just an identity, you know, like an identity situation that we shouldn't really bother with. Um, but I have been an artist for as long as I can remember. I grew up in England, I'm British. I grew up in um, a very beautiful part of England called Cornwall, which is um, the southern tip of England in the deep country. And I was a, an only child and very often on my own. So I love painting and that's what I would do uh, throughout my life um, as a child painting was what was, um, it saved me. And there was never any question what I was going to do. And so when I was ready to go to college, I went to art college and I studied um, in England um, as a painter. And um, then like many people, when you, you know, like a, the trained as painters, when you came out of school, there was nothing much you could do um, unless you wanted to teach, which I didn't do until much later in life. So I ended up doing many, 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 many other things, including art directing, uh, painting scenery. I moved to the um, United States, well, first to Canada, 
had a family, uh, moved to Los Angeles, where I did a lot of scenic painting for the um, movie industry and um, faux painting for a major architectural firm, international ar architectural firm. But I had um, totally lost interest in, in doing my own painting and, and maybe I'd lost um, my spirit a little bit and I found it again. Um, and when I, when I retired, quote unquote, and moved here to the Bay Area where my son is involved in the tech industry and to be close to my grandchildren. And um, I started up again and I reinvented, just went all the way back. Um, so I feel like I'm a child again. I'm able to paint everything that I love. Uh, this I feel is uh, pertaining to the, um, I, I work in all kinds of different mediums. Um, I met Luna because I work a lot with digital, but this painting here is uh, with uh, oil color, oil painting. And it's of my granddaughter, my oldest granddaughter who is um, in transition. Um, she's trans um, and actually lived in China and worked in China for uh, Shanghai and also went throughout China um, for several years and then um, lived in Vietnam and found that um, um, he um, was, re her uh, true identity was Luna, was a girl. So she's now um, in transition to being a woman and our family respects that. And this is my, my painting of her um, standing in my room, which is, this is my studio. And I had her pose for me and painted her standing by the window. And um, so this is very close to me and I submitted it to you guys because uh, this is her identity. Funnily enough, uh, as an artist, she attended the same art school that I did in England. So we're very close together. We're the two painters in the family. Yeah, the next one here um, is done with gouache, um, which I love that medium. And I also, I put this in as identity because it's from a drawing a little sketch that I did um, in the uh, SF MoMA dining room. And um, I just found these two people to be fascinating. Um, I've called it um, SF MoMA um, um, uh, body language because there was so much language between them. And I love the way in which the guy or girl or whatever she is anyway, on the left-hand side was communicating with the other person and then um, the colors start to, to just communicate the interaction between them, you know. So that's what that one's all about. That's a much smaller painting, but um, very dear to me. Um, feel, you know, I felt very close to these two people and I just did a quick sketch of them and then came back and painted it because the communication was important to me. And um, I think that, you know, that's kind of goes through all my work. I think the rest of the paintings you'll see um, that I submitted to you to show you um, are all really about um, in identity in one sort or another. I, um, this is a, actually a painting done on my iPad. Um, and um, this is of a friend of mine who's been tremendously helpful to me as an artist. Um, she works in a big gallery, a gallery um, on the peninsula, and she's really a great person. And I did this painting of her really for her. And um, but it's done on an iPad. And, uh, you know, I it the working on an iPad and painting on an iPad, I found was really inspirational for me. And it got me back to my I, I no longer really work on an iPad um, to paint. Um, I kind of exhausted it for myself as a medium and I went back to traditional media, but I, it helped me tremendously because um, I could go down so many roads so quickly and investigate so many angles so fast. And um, yeah, so this was one way, this is one route that I took. She's some, um, yeah, I drew her. In the, so this is um, um, again an oil painting, um, but it's done based on a drawing that I did actually. And um, this is actually done with a class I teach. And um, this was done with a class that I had 
um, and we were in Stanford Mall, which is a, a mall um, in Palo Alto, and they have beautiful flowers there. And you can see the person in the background. And I, you know, I don't know, to me, she, figure is a part of landscape. Um, they're intrinsic in, and they kind of belong in it. And I like to have my figures just kind of, their identity is part of the landscape. So this is an important painting to me. And the message is kind of like a see, it, this is a recurring theme for me of just individuals. I don't really know quite what it is, but um, just talks to me and then, anyway, that's that one. <laughs> Again, this is um, a different perspective, but um, I call this the back door. And it's a, it kind of spoke to me. Um, I did it before pandemic, uh, just before pandemic hit. Um, but this is um, outside or back door of a restaurant, which has been very hard hit. And it's just, uh, I would walk by this restaurant a lot. It's just behind where I teach. So I walked by and I just was totally struck it's actually one of, there's four different parts to this painting. This is just one part, but it's a right back of a restaurant. So there you can see all of my work that I submitted to you. Thanks very much, Carolyn. Um, you know, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about your, your time and when you were little in, in, in Cornwall. Um, uh, I got a chance to, you know, I've always heard about the English moors, right? The, oh, yeah. the grasses, the windswept moors. Um, did, did, uh, this, this might be a bit of a leading question, but I guess I'm wondering when you were little and you're going through the moors and everything's waving around, did, did you get a, a, a sense of, of the spirit in, and I'm not religious or anything, yes. I don't mean, but. Yes, um, well, you should know about Cornwall. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Britain was originally, the original people that lived on that island uh, were called Britons, and they were part of the Celtic race, the original Celtic race. Uh, Britain was um, overtaken by, um, you know, the Vikings, because they were looking for warmer places to live. And um, so King Alfred, um, um, you know, the round table, you've seen all these films about King Alfred, um, King Arthur, I'm sorry, King Arthur. Um, so he did a deal with the um, with them, and he said, "Okay, we will we'll divide up Britain into these kingdoms, and you can have some of them, and we'll go to the other ones." So the kingdoms that the original Britons went to was uh, uh, Cornwall and Devon and all the west part, and they still speak the original language. There's a Cornish language, which is similar. It's a Gaelic language similar to Welsh and Scot um, Scottish. And they're very spiritual people. I believe in fairies. And I was brought up there by, and my mother, my, although my family is not Cornish, I was brought up by um, people who lived in the village. And um, so I, I didn't, the, the, the Moors really scared me, but I went to, I was, I was sent to boarding school when I was seven years old as a young child. This is done in England uh, to my, the people that, type of people that I live, you know, that my parents, it was expected. You went to, you went away. You, you were sent away when you were seven. But I was just close to King Arthur's castle in Tintagel and we would go there. And I was just on the edge of the moors, which are very frightening, very frightening places. Um, so what I loved about Cornwall was just the, um, I don't know, and I think it's really has inf affected my work, actually, I never thought about that, but this obsession with these um, individuals, like sort of lost in a space, I think it has something to do with that. So there you go. Thanks for talking about that. And uh, the reason I was asking that leading question is I just, you know, well, first you start, you know, your second painting with the, the two people interacting and like I was noticing the shape of her body just kind of blending with the, the forces and the colors. Uh, and then your, your, the third painting with, the, with the, uh, the sort of the single person walking through the forest, your, your flowers on the lower left, you know, they're bending, they're reaching out toward that person. Yes. And so you talk about 
being raised among people who, whether they believe it or not, or at least maybe told stories about fairies and the spirits in the woods, I, I really feel that's what I see in that painting that, yeah, that's a human being who's conscious and alive, but the flowers seem to know that their friend is coming to visit. They're saying, come on. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The person, um, it's interesting, like you say these things and I don't think I ever thought the thought um, I just get involved in the movement and the music, right. the, um, the, me the melody and the music and the, um, yeah, like the, the, just the, the, the rhythm. I, 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 rhythm is very important to me. And the, when I look at these paintings, just again, I can, especially in my later paintings, I, I think you see a lot of rhythm. And that rhythm, I think, is a rhythm of, of the world and people and, and plants. And they're all equally important. They're all interrelated. And I, I truly do believe that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Yumi, I'm going to throw a question to you if uh, you're still there. I know in your work, you talked about the, your, your red ribbon and the power and importance of that color. Um, so I'm wondering, when you look at Carolyn's work, especially the last one with the, that orange door. And, and uh, I won't ask too leading a question, Carolyn, that the orange door really uh, grabbed me. Um, so, Carol, uh, so Yumi, I'm wondering, when you look at Carolyn's painting of the orange door, what does it make you feel? Or, or what, what do you think is, is there? Why did, why did Carolyn, um, you know, much, the rest of the painting is rather muted colors. I mean, you do have some blue there. What's, what's going on with that door? What, what is that making you feel? Uh, first of all, it's a lovely painting. Um, it's like very, I feel like very like emotional. Like I feel like some feelings coming out of it, especially because like the cool colors around that orange door are um, kind of like sad, almost like sorrow. Um, but that orange door feels like very welcoming and it feels like home and so I get the sense, like I, I'm like drawn to that door and like I want to know like what makes that place so like comfortable and um, so welcoming. Steve, what, what, do, what do you see in Carolyn's orange door there? Well, I, I just like the, um, the color combination. Um, you know, I'm not very philosophical when it comes to art, um, but I like that's my favorite of her pieces because I because you know especially the time we're living in, um, and you know the fact that you know living in San Francisco, you you basically see nothing but restaurants that are going out of business, and I think that basically kind of gives the mood of what we're experiencing right now. And so, but I really like the the contrast of the orange door that's all I can say it's just very effective Great, that's thanks. interesting um I appreciate that uh, both of your comments because they're both very spot on and it's interesting when other artists comment on your work you, you see things you didn't see before um because you're just painting but one of the things that um is I'm obsessed with is color and color relationships. And I've done made a lot of study of color, especially of the painters of the 19th century um, from Monet onwards and all the way up through the 20th to the 20th century. And um, um, I know that many people use, and when I was in, in uh, a designer and I was an art director, I was forced to use the um, 12 color wheel that you're all familiar with and we get taught in school as the what color combinations and that the opposite of green is red and the opposite of yellow is purple blah 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 I don't know I'm sure some of you are familiar with this um anyway in my travel in my work as an artist I I started to question this wheel and it, I had to go back into the eight, 19th century to Paris and to all everything that was done, and I found this fascinating story there about this was the whole study of color, and it was a, um, a, a met the whole story of the impressionists and post-impressionists onwards, all the way up through the painters of the 20th century, um, was a, a meeting of scientific breakthroughs on the subject of light and color because of photography, 
and the artists who were reading the books that these people were writing and were using all of the technology in their work. None of that was ever taught to me in college. No, I had, I had to find it out for myself. So funnily enough, just, just the opposite of this red color is the color that goes around it. Not on the standard wheel, but on a different wheel, uh, the one that I use. Um, that was really good editing, self-editing, Carolyn. You're, that's right smack on time. We want to move on to, to Yumi, but uh, thanks so much. And you know what's Thank interesting in, in talking to to artists, this, this this idea of, wow, I never thought about that before. Thanks for, you know, in, in my own art. And um, I, I, I'll i just say um, many moons ago, I was writing fiction and it freaked me out so bad when I would write my fiction thinking I was writing about one thing and then I would give it to people and then they totally have this other interpretation. And and it, it was, it took something to get used to, but it also taught me that often artists are best uh, operating from their, I guess we'll say subconscious or just some deep area that doesn't get processed through logic and, you know, A equals B equals C. So, um, but thanks, I, I love, I love, I really love your painting. So thank you very much. Uh, Yumi, uh, again, uh, like I said earlier, I was so excited to see your work because like, oh, look, my daughter's an artist after all. Yay. Um, but in any case, uh, so what's, you know, interesting, of course, uh, so I'm glad to see your work and, and especially, you know, this past, uh, well, I'll just name names because of Trump and uh, the uh, comments about uh, women and things that he made. There's been a lot in the past few years around uh, the role, rights, and treatment of, of women in society. So um, I think it's pretty valuable to see your paintings uh, talk about, um, you know, what that can feel like. Uh, so in any case, um, yeah, thanks for being here tonight. And uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and your work. Yeah, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, inviting me. Um, I was really excited to participate in the conference. Um, this is the first time I'll be like kind of talking about myself to um, a larger group of people. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, so hello, my name is Yumi. Um, I'm an artist in entertainment and um, fine artist uh, based in LA. Um, and so since this conference is about identity, I thought I would share sort of my path to uh, what I would consider my identity currently. Um, and so originally I started pursuing art um, more seriously when I began um, my uh, schooling at Otis College of Art and Design in LA. And I originally entered the art school thinking I would become an animator or a concept artist for films and animations. And so my goal was sort of to get into like big companies like Disney and Pixar and all that jazz. But um, as I furthered my studies, I like met a bunch of really incredible people who um, sort of influenced me over the years. And um, I sort of came to realization that because my goal was that my original goal was to get into these companies, I was kind of pigeonholing myself um, to only look at these like specific industry artists and like copy their style um, just because I wanted to get into those companies. Um, and it was, I realized that kind of, that was unhealthy um, for my mindset and my growth. Um, and it was a really difficult realization to come to because that was, that was like my motivation when I just started art. Um, and um, I kind of, there was a period where I felt like I lost my purpose, um, but um, I was slowly able to like shift my um, goals uh, to get from getting into these big companies into kind of finding my own voice and by um, honing my skills and fundamentals. And I realized that like the company and whatever, this gets me into is kind of secondary. Um, and at the same time, I was, I started seeing art more objectively instead of like, oh, wow, this is like an artist at a big company. Like I'm gonna like worship their artwork. Um, I sort of started to see better. And I realized that there was 
very little personality and voice in some of and in many of the artworks that's created for these big companies. Um, and that's very understandable because that's for like someone else's idea, like it's someone else's story. Um, and so I also realized that um, if I continue to just do art for someone else, um, I don't think that would be fulfilling to me as like an individual creator. Um, and so I started creating my own personal work um, which is what you see on screen. Um, and I was very fortunate to meet like my mentor who kind of opened paths uh, for me to pursue my own work, my personal work. And um, he introduced me to like the gallery scene and the fine arts, uh, which um, I kind of dove into at that point. Um, and I, because I was able to pursue and like produce my personal works to show at these galleries. And so now I kind of, I, I think that I have two artistic identities. One is my commercial art and the other is my personal gallery work. Um, and so like during the week, um, I have like a full-time job as a commercial artist um, for entertainment. And on, after work and on the weekends, I would do my personal work, um, which I get to show at galleries. Um, so I feel like in a way, I'm in a really um, great spot right now where I've kind of achieved both of my goals of like working as an industry artist, um, because like right out of school, I was able to land a job at Disney. And now I work for a mobile game company. Um, and I, I still get to kind of um, uh, pursue like entertainment art, which is also really cool because um, there's so many artists out there who are amazing at what they do and I still get influenced by them and we kind of grow with each other. And then there's also something freeing um, about uh, working on something that's not yours. Like you just, you there's it feels like you have less responsibility almost um, though you are responsible for that project. Um, but um, it's nice to have this balance between commercial art and personal art. And so, um, yeah, I'm really, uh, really happy with where I am right now. And I'm really fortunate that people uh, like uh, people from Artlift who kind of resonate with my personal work because that is like my personal voice. And um, and so, yeah, like, thank you, thank you again for inviting me. This is super awesome. It's really, it's really fulfilling to see like people who want to see my personal work. So I'm gonna ask sort of two people uh, questions at the same time. Uh, first, uh, Wenlu, I know it'll take a little bit longer because of translation and everything, but uh, if um, I just would like, so uh, uh, Yumi, I know that you talked about how uh, in your interview, you had talked about how, you know, as an Asian woman, uh, you have to be careful what you say. And the work that we're showing off here is definitely about silence and restricted motion and, and things like that. So um, I would just like to know, uh, uh, have Wenlu talk about uh, what she thinks about this idea that, you know, as a, that a Asian women or, or, or Asian culture uh, uh, sort of creates maybe an expectation of, of silence or, or less freedom to express yourself for women. So uh, Angela, if you could take care of that and then kind of maybe translate it back later. Um, Belu said that she really likes Yumi's work and she thinks it's very straightforward and it has that Japanese anime's feeling um, to it and um, it also feels um, constrained but modern. Um, she said that the female's role in China it's more dynamic. Um, females often have like different roles in the society um, like in a family it could be a mother it could be a child or wife and uh, her new work is also about um, female but more about like family side of that and in China females faces more issues regarding the relationship with their children um, sometimes they have a lot of conflicts between them um, and so Yumi's work feels um, like it appeals to like young people, uh, but not only females, but a lot of like young people, um, they are probably 
feeling like more constrained and more powerless and um, constrained to the speech in the society. Uh, I feel like I'm already close friends with Yumi, even we just know for a couple months, I think. But um, from this work, I think uh, when we do the interview, uh, when I interviewed Yumi a uh, couple couple weeks ago or a couple months months ago, I feel like I I really feel the feelings he wants to uh, she she wants to say because she as a she has a Japanese background uh, culture and I have the Chinese background culture and uh, I moved to U.S. around eight, eight seven eight years right now and I feel like uh, the American girls they have more power than Asian girls or Asian women and um, I don't know if the uh, Right now, Carolyn, she grows up in UK and moves to US and it's all like Western, from the Western culture, right? Uh, does Carolyn have the same feelings when, um, when she grows up? Does she has like, when she was like around 20s or 30s, she feels like the family or the cultures behind her gave her the limited feelings like, something I can to say, something is not polite, something uh, I need to think about others' feelings. And it's more like you you really, uh, it's not the feelings you want to feel. Sometimes you have to be a little bit selfish to to consider you feels, right? So, but in Asian culture, sometimes you, you just, you have to forget yourself at all and you have to make people around you more happy, <laughs> happier. Yeah, no, that's, that's such a cool moment like in your life uh thank you for sharing that but because I like totally relate to that um just because like I think um even though I also grew up in America like I was raised by like Japanese parents and that's I feel like that's sort of like a cultural thing that's ingrained into Asian like cultures to not argue and like try to kind of please everyone uh, around you and like um, like if if it's going to cause an argument you should just like not speak um, but in like America um, I, I feel like discussions are like what's so great about American culture it's like a lot more freeing and people have like it's okay to have like different opinions because you can like talk about it and so that's definitely like um, that's like a very specific example but that's definitely something like I wanted to communicate um, in my work because it is sometimes really difficult um, to kind of break out of that shell that you were kind of like raised in to like speak what what you think um, even though like you feel like it's not the right thing to do and that that sort of like trains that trains that sort of negativity um, out of you and I think that's really important um, especially uh, when you do have to like kind of uh, fight for your individuality and in such like a individualistic society <laughs> of America. Uh, anyway thanks for that whole exchange uh, Angela thanks for the translation I know that's not easy stuff uh, Wen Lu thanks for your comments um, and then everyone on that now to Carolyn um, you know, you had mentioned earlier that you've been around for a while. So uh, having been around for a while, you've been part of lots of social changes. And, um, and how, do, how do you, what, what strikes you about this idea? Uh, you know, again, with these images talking about silence and, and whether women can, can feel comfortable uh, speaking out. Uh, how does that strike you? Well, first of all, I love your work. It's absolutely beautiful. And I'm glad that you are pursuing your personal work as well as your industry work. And I think it's great that you're able to do both. And um, so well done. I'm most fascinated actually by the, the obviously this red ribbon is, is um, something that I don't know if it has any other, if it has any other significance like red ribbon as a ribbon like whether it means anything but it you know it's obviously trying to silence you in some way or another um i mean i can see that um for me um the most fascinating pain painting is the very first one um because it's got so much happening with it um with the bright red around her and the 
flowers. So I found that to be um, disturbing. It just, it's a disturbing painting and it's really good. The others are beautiful too. Don't get me, I just, that's, <laughs> that's the one that really resonated. And the other one that resonated was the one where the, with the um, face that's um, disappearing into the snow, is it? I think, but it's disappearing and the flowers that are coming up. And I, and I, you know, I never really have considered that personally as a woman, I'm silenced. And that never like occurred to me that I didn't have a voice. And so, but I can imagine that you could feel that way. And, um, you know, but I think more just as an individual, as a person, um, that first one, like it has anguish in it. Uh, the the one that the, the one at the top left, I, I think it's a very powerful, really powerful painting for me personally. And um, they're beautiful. Yeah, the first painting um, is uh, when I did, uh, uh, when COVID started getting really bad in America. And um, I was, so I started taking like walks um, during the day, like around my neighborhood. And uh, I was really fascinated at um, how much uh, vegetation grows um, in the absence of humans. <laughs> um, <That's> like, so... <laughs> yeah, like when when the quarantine just started, um, no one was going outside. There were less cars, um, and uh, I just I was like fascinated because there was like plants growing out of the pavement, out of the roads, like from random places that I'd never seen them before. And I was like really inspired by kind of that um, almost like ruthlessness to like, just just come back <laughs> like wherever. And um, at the time uh, I had just lost my job actually. And so I was, I felt kind of lost. And so those plants sort of like, I felt um, inspired and kind of um, encouraged by like seeing those plants and how they were just like growing like wherever they could. Okay, Steve, uh, thanks for joining today. And uh, I really uh, enjoyed your, your uh, collages. Um, I'm pretty stuck on that first one uh, with the, all the angles and people moving, who knows where, and maybe they don't know where, you know, who knows, but uh, I, um, and so, uh, yeah, so I really like that. I like your, your whole history of being in a, uh, being with horses and being a veterinarian and then getting to college a little bit later and, I mean, not sorry, getting into art a little bit later. And, and I'm also pretty fascinated by the fact that you started out, uh, let's say politically or, you know, whatever in one uh, side of things and moved pretty quickly in another. So. Thanks for joining us today. I think you've got a lot going on. Why don't you tell us a little about, about yourself and your art? Well, um, you know, first of all, I'm really happy to be a part of the Art Lift program because it's, you know, it's, it's really interesting, um, just your whole concept. And so I really thank you for that. And one thing I wanted to say to Carolyn was, now I'm, uh, I don't see myself. <laughs> Um, anyway, um, I have a very good friend that lives in Cornwall in Tresmere. I've been to Cornwall a couple of times and it's, it really is a, a wonderful place. See, this is one, I belong to a collage group that we meet once a month in at one of the galleries and we just have a bunch of magazines and things that we sort through and pick out pieces. So this didn't have a, a there was no philosophy behind it. And, uh, basically, I just found a bunch of images that I liked that fit together. And so oftentimes with my collages, they, I'm not really telling a story necessarily. I'm, I'm just basically, Fit, you know, looking at images and saying, well, I like the way that looks with that. And so it's kind of design more than anything else. And, um, and so this is one of my favorite pieces though. And this just happened in an evening at the, the art, gallery, uh, art gallery in San Francisco at our collage group. Um, because I go into that, that evening without a preconceived notion and I just start looking through magazines and pick out images. And so that's where that came from. And so, and this 
is basically another one of my collages. And one of the things that I do is um, I kind of have certain artists that I um, like and I, and I steal from. And so basically this is a, a Henri Legere. Um, I, I kind of used his geometry from one of his paintings, but then I do it in my own way, but I kind of steal the geometry. And so I did a series of these. I have, there's only one in, that I uh, posted, but um, there's, there's three in this series. And so again, it's, it's just, um, I kind of put together images in the design that I, you know, that I decide I kind of like what's, you know, what's happening. Um, I'm not necessarily selling, telling a story, even though this is the, the two um, kind of Baroque images are from Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel. Um, but um, it, again, it's, it's basically, uh, a, you know, I, I start out with the geometry and then I just kind of fill in the images to, to my satisfaction. This is a, a current series that I'm working on, which are large. And um, I'm also stealing geometry from another artist that I ran into in Cape Cod. Um, his name's Matthew Bellin. And, and, but this is a, you know, it's, it's just, I just kind of take a section of his piece as far as how the, how the forms work together. And then I kind of do it in my own way. Actually, the funny thing is, is I sent the image of the, not the finished piece, because I realized looking at it that it's slightly different now <laughs> than this, this picture. But um, I'm doing three of these. And they're, in fact, this one is currently at the San Francisco Women's Gallery in their current show. Um, and so I'm kind of using geometry from this artist, but doing it in my own way. I mean, one of the, when, when I was in Spain about a year ago, um, there's a lot of Picasso. And one of the uh, quotes from Picasso was bad artists copy, good artists steal. And so I've always stolen. Um, I mainly steal geometry. <laughs> And, um, but this is uh, the second piece in this series that these are, you know, large mixed media pieces like three feet by three feet. And the second piece I'm not happy with right now. So I'm kind of experimenting with it. Um, I don't know how it's going to end. I may end up, you know, painting over sections of it. I'm not sure. But this was the first one in this current series. Um, uh, I like, you know, there's some Chinese newspaper. I like using Chinese characters. I'm not, I don't know what they say. I just like the way they look. And so I incorporate them in a lot of my work. Um, oh, this did have a, was a story because this, this one's called The Crash of 2008 because I did a series for this, um, this show about a year ago at Art Gallery, which was political. And so actually this was the least political of the, the, the various collages I did, but this one kind, you know, 2008 hit us in the, I, you know, in the whole world, but it hit us in the Bay Area particularly hard. And so I, I was kind of using an image from the dollar um, and, and then showing kind of the mayhem in the piece <laughs> of what, you know, how money was affected in 2008. Uh, and I don't have it. I didn't submit any of my other political pieces um, to arts to Artlift, but um, that's what this story. This one actually does have a story. It's like, you know, this is a series of that I've done that are very large. They're they're three feet by four feet, and there's an artist called um, uh, Mr. Brainwash that had a big show in down in one of the big galleries down in Union Square. And I really loved his work, and he very he basically combined um, graffiti with with iconic figures. And so I just took the idea of what he did, and so I used um, basic graffiti that I saw around San Francisco in the background. But I, this is all painted. Well, there is some silk screen in here and some collage, but it's mainly um, a, a acrylic painting and and. So uh, I, I was just kind of using the idea that Mr. Brainwash used in his work in my own way. And um, I, I have three of these large paintings. I've sold one of them. Um, and I, this is my favorite one. I really, I really like this. The, the, the um, chimpanzee head 
comes from a photo I took of a, on a, the door of a bar in Barcelona. Anyway, so those are the, the four that I kind of selected. I, if you, you know, my website has a lot more of my work. Um, I do dabble in, in various other things. It's like I, I've taken, you know, I'm not an educator. I, 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 I didn't go to school for art, except I did take a series of drawing classes when I first retired at San Francisco City College from this wonderful artist, Diane Oliveira, uh, that it was all basically pastel drawing. And so that's kind of what me got, got me back into the art when I first, um, this was about five, six years ago when I first stopped working as a veterinarian. And, um, and so I have a bunch of pastel drawings that I've done. And then recently I kind of got into landscape oil painting, but I'm not, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I don't like my paintings as much as I do my collage work. So I don't really you know, promote them. I just do it every once in a while because I, I'm hoping that someday I can actually achieve something that makes me happy with the painting. <laughs> but um, so basically, uh, that that's that's just kind of a, a variety of the the various things that I've been doing because I do bounce around a lot. I've also done some photography and. Um, but uh, but I mainly you know kind of stick with collage or at least mixed media, and I've been very happy and lucky to to you know get into local art galleries. I I've never you know I've never had my an exclusive you know show of my own, but I get pieces in group shows constantly. It's like right now I'm in two different galleries, and so to me that was just an amazing thing to to you know to go from from being a practicing veterinarian to start dabbling in art and then actually getting my work out in the world. Um, I, you know, I'm thrilled by that. Now that we're in this COVID period, um, you know, it's like I'm pretty much stuck in my apartment. And so it's not like I'm doing a lot of art, but I'm doing art, you know, regularly. Um, because uh, it is, you know, I, I, that's something that just kind of keeps me going. Thanks, Steve. And you know, what's interesting is how little details can reveal huge changes. Um, so uh, I, I remember a time when in, uh, in the United States, like no one ever would have wanted to learn Chinese and it was a foreign language. Uh, and uh, we even passed a law many years ago saying English must be the only language. And, that whole sort of nativist uh, thing. So actually, even though it's a very small detail, the fact that you can just say, hey, I use Chinese just because I think it looks good. And you just put it in your painting and it's not a big deal. That's actually, the fact that it's not a big deal to you is actually a big deal. Uh, I uh -huh. think, you know, you, you talked a little bit in your interview, you know, you were around in the six, you know, the, during those, those the, all that social change. And here's one of them. Here you are using Chinese just because you like it. So thanks for doing that. First of all, I'm you know, being a, you know, basically a progressive um, politically, uh, I'm very interested in, in other cultures. And that's why travel is so important. That's one of the hard things about our current period being stuck at home is I can't go anywhere and I love to travel. But, you know, it, the, the, and I have, you know, living in San Francisco, is a very Chinese place. And so I have many Chinese friends, but that's not why I just like the look of Chinese characters. And so, you know, my fear has always been that somebody was going to look at my art and, and read what it says and think that I'm, you know, saying something, which I'm not. I mean, you know, it, it, I don't even know what it says. I just, you know, I say, well, I, you know, that I'm going to put that in that piece there because I like the way those characters look. <laughs> and, that's the extent of the, the you know, the, the communication. Um, so I've always kind of feared the, you know, somebody kind of taking exception to how I use the Chinese characters. But, you know, that I don't worry about that too much. No one is writing me with, with angry comments about, about your use of Chinese. <laughs> so I think you're okay. Uh, Luna, did you have a question? Yeah, I know. Uh, I interviewed with uh, Steve before, and he said um, he doesn't have many philosophy ideas be, uh, behind the arts usually when he created. But uh, I tried clutch before a couple 
just a couple of times, but every time I feel like I could put more on it because um, there are so many stuff. And when you, when you combine different stuff together, it looks really cool or different. So when do you feel you feel satisf- satisfied with the art when you're creating them and you feel like, oh, that's it. Um, I think that's the, that's the way I feel it looks beautiful or something. What's that feeling to you? Well, it's like right now, the second piece in the, the, the kind of the large mixed media that I talked about, I'm totally unhappy with it. And so I'm making a smaller version of it and I'm going to try, you know, like splattering paint on it and see if that helps me feel better about it. Um, but it's just one of those things where at a point in time I go, well, that's, that's done, you know, and that's all I can say. It's totally aesthetic and it's my own aesthetic and you know it's it's one of those situations where um i do experiment a lot and like right now there's a collage that i'm working on that i i ran across some images in a magazine and i thought oh i really like the way those things look together and i'm not happy with the way the collage is right now so i'm trying different things because one of the ways i approach collage is i put things down and i don't paste it i take photos and then I remember various combinations and then I go back and look at the photos and say, okay, I really like the way that looked. And so it's a process with collage where the, you know, that's kind of my, my process is I take photos as I'm going through the process, like the, the, the uh, Superman, I did, I do that in a computer first and then I print it up and then I, you know, I, I expand it to four feet by three feet. I, but I, I do the whole piece in, com, in a computer and then I paint the, com, you know, what I've created in the computer. I don't always, I don't do that with the collage. I just take photos as I'm kind of going through the process mm-hmm. and then decide what is the final combination. And then I glue that down. Um, so that's kind of my system with the, um, the, the fourth one in the group, the, 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 with the blue, which isn't actually the finished piece, I realized, um, that I, I also do kind of a small version of it, which I work from, and, and then it kind of changes when I'm actually working with it. But so, you know, the, it, these things take a lot of time, um, most of the time, um, because of the the pr- process, the, the one that took the least amount of time was the no, the last one, the the black and white, because I did that in an evening at the uh, at the you know my collage group at the gallery, and you know that's often the way that works is those collages come together really quickly, um, generally. That was fun. That was the last three minutes. Well, I knew you're gonna be, but I just wanted to say first that I really enjoyed the kind of mixture of sort of organic forms with, you know, in the box, almost sort of a technological or mathematical thing. And that's certainly a, a theme in our, our whole society right now is how do we, we as organic beings, how do we live in this world that's becoming, uh, seems less and less uh, organic. So that said, uh, Luna, you want to take it? Hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be invited in this event. The artwork I'm showing is called Inner Space. I choose to use the three primary colors in nature, red, yellow, and blue, to make the cube boxes to present the work. Perfect straight lines in right and in and right angles do not exist in nature. But nowadays we live in all straight lines, right angles, all kinds of big boxes like buildings. And sometimes our hearts are framed in boxes just like our bodies are. Especially in the growth stage of each person, the more prosperous of outside world is and the more noisy the inner world is. It is very difficult to leave some inner space for ourselves. So a three-dimensional box is used that uh, with flat pictures on the surface to form a con- contrast, just like the frame formed by squeezing the outside and the inside. The red box symbolizes the origin of life and represents your body. It is filled with blood vessels, hairs. The yellow is a spiritual light. It should be pure and full of power. And I, uh, she, can, she joined the 
butterflies on the yellow box and it feels like the emotions from hu human beings, but it is always affected by the emotions and trapped in endless chains of chaos. The last one, the blue box, just like the sea and the sky are all blue, is wide and open, symbolize our inner growth. It is open, seemingly free from the framework and constraints. But in fact, it is a state of emptiness. Returning to nature, emptiness is the state of having everything but not clinging to everything at the same time. I was still young when I made this work and I don't think I was that mature. Although I have thought a lot about it, uh, but my installation work is still very limited and I cannot uh, com completely express what I want to say clearly at that time. But like the open blue box, it can be imagined in many ways. Maybe you guys have the same feeling right now. And thank you all. So um, thanks, Wen Lu. Thanks, Luna. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have a question for Wen Lu, and then I'll go to Nisi and Pong to see what kind of comments you might have, uh, which is this idea of, of, of being boxed in by the world. Uh, is that something that you've felt in your life or that you've seen uh, any friends uh, experience? Uh, based on her own experience, uh, sometimes she, um, like when, when her emotions are out, like she feels she's like um, affected by these emotions and that she's like living within like a kind of constrained um, space. I have more understanding of this girl because we, we were primary school classmates and we met each other around seven or six years old. And she was the most quiet student in the six years. So uh, I, think, um, I think I can understand why she said she, uh, she don't express that much, but she, she do have a lot of thoughts in her mind because um, right now she's most, uh, she is one of the most successful uh, young artists in China and graduated from the best art school and even the best students in the, I think in, in, in that time. So uh, she must have a lot of to create or a lot of want to express that. That's why she said like, she, she has all the artworks, but usually in the, in the real, in real life, she couldn't uh, express that easily uh, without art. Hello, Pong. Uh, hey, it's, uh, first, it's an honor to meet you. I saw your work in the Chronicle for the uh, Three Line series. Uh, uh, really loved it. Um, just wanted to know if you had any particular reaction to seeing Wenlu's work. I love the concept of her work about the box from the modern world, and she kind of linked it into the like the nature of the universe. Right? That's just what I understand from how how she explained. And I just love the concept of the basic color, the, the basic red, yellow, and blue color is pretty basic and it could like touch most of the people, right? And all the color has its own concept, which is related to like basic human life, which is I, I appreciate that. I feel like, oh, this is a good concept of work. And you said you did this uh, when you were like a lot younger than this. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it's a very good concept. I, I like the concept of, yeah, like like I said at, earlier that I like the concept of the box of like represent the modern world, but it's like the nature is still there. It just got boxes <laughs> by a human. And the last one is very good ending for the blue one that is still open for imagination and and what will coming next in the future. Yes, that's just well, that's just my thought for this work. Is that answer your question? <laughs> I'm not sure. That, that answered my question. 
Actually, Carolyn, I just want to ask you the, the same thing because your work is very figurative. I can look at your work and I can go, oh, that's a flower, that's a person. And of course, when I looked at Wendell Liu's work, I had to kind of scratch my head a little bit and go, what's going on here? So uh, as, as a, so Carolyn, as an artist who, who paints things that, that I can actually recognize, uh, what's, how, do you, how does the Wendell Liu's work strike you? For me, what always amazes me with, uh, and I consider this fairly abstract art, um, although it isn't really because it's an expression of real things in the universe. Um, but there is a lot of philosophy behind it. And this is true, I think, of all great abstract art. There's a lot of um, philosophy behind it. And um, I'm, I'm interested to know if she has ever studied or been introduced to the work of the Bauhaus, um, which is now one at uh, the great school uh, with Vasily Kandinsky, uh, Paul Clay. Um, her, her work seems to, to me to um, emulate that particular um, movement if she is familiar with it. It's um, the German, the school that was started in Germany in 1919 and the teachers there was Paul Clay and Vasily Kandinsky and um, their colors were red, yellow, and blue. Good, good catch, Carolyn. You're you're absolutely right about um, relating the colors. 对，我觉得那个呃，您说到呃，文露塞达 ，actually a lot of her works are um in or like she personally is influenced by the Bauhaus movement because as someone living in China, a lot of um the buildings in China. Are inspired by the Bauhaus designs, um, like to meet the max maximum capacity. So you get like these little squares of um, like apartments, rooms, um, and she Wen Lu feels like um, living in these like little box. You kind of you know um, you feel like you're living in a box. You know you're constrained and. Um, yeah, so she, uh, during her study, college study in China, she also studied a lot of um, the art history and the Bauhaus um, art movement. And yeah, so she thinks her works are related to the Bauhaus. That's so wonderful. That's awesome. Thank you. And thanks for bringing that up, Carolyn. That was a pretty good interrelationship there. <laughs> Very good, thanks. Uh, so thank you so much, Winlu. That was uh, pretty terrific, and I'm glad I finally understand it. Uh, so let's go to uh, let's go to Pong. Uh, thanks so much for your the art that you did for Nicole. Um, and just so you know, I, I happen to work for an organization that's promoting sort of urban sustainability and trying to make the future uh, possible by um, you know, just finding ways for us to live a little bit lighter uh, on the planet and uh, without destroying things so much. So I really love the positive vision. A lot of the things you you painted for the Chronicle actually um, fit some, some of the things we're talking about. In any case, I know we have some other work that you're showing here. And uh, why don't you, you know, like everyone else, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about uh, your work. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Pong. It's actually from the uh, Chinese name Liu Weipeng, but just let's just call me Pong, like Ping Pong, <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm originally from Thailand, as you, as some of you might may know, and uh, not, right now I am a concept artist working in game and animation industry. Uh, most of my work are, uh, are like a cute cute style, like cute animal and war related. And I just basically try to combine it together since it's, it's both my favorite thing, I guess. Uh, it might sound like a contrast between like violence and something cute, right? But I found myself like enjoy doing, enjoy combining this together because I just feel like it's it's real and it's happening in this world, but we don't have to look at it as a like negative things. We could make it positive. So I'm a person who love to enjoy to observe light around me and the light lighting. So I usually love to observe the light from 
uh, everyday life, like the lighting scenario. So I did a lot of plein air and color studies. Yeah, and I adapt those on my works a lot. So most of my work are uh, more like environment related. And I love to, uh, to demonstrate or explore or create a space that people could walk in and has its own uh, characteristic of, of that space. And as you can see, it's like, I, I love to portray, uh, portray and describe the mood through the colors and also the structures or uh, all the anything that cultural related as well. Uh, this is my, actually my room in, in San Francisco, but uh, this room, this room is already gone. It's one of my memory space that I want to remember that I was in this room. This is one of my example of how, how I remember how I feel with the space. I'm a little bit like a, a emotional person in terms of like attaching to the space that I was living in or even the city that I was walk around before. Yeah, some picture kind of still capturing in my, uh, still captured in my head. So one of, one kind of my art is to like explain how I feel with the space through the lighting and the environment, mood and feeling that I, I felt at that moment. It sounds like impressionism, but yeah, I guess it's kind of close. If this is one of my, uh, one of my example about how I, uh, how I mix the cuteness with the war machine, basically. Uh, and also the lighting that I love, like they're just stuck in the mud and try to be serious. But at the end of the day, they are just a cute animal <laughs> with a war machine, which is kind of related to the real life. Even though people are making war, they, even we are human and we thought like we are we are so smart than other animals, but we we still we are still one one of the creature on this world that driving a chunk of uh, iron to fight each other. Basically, yeah, but we we are still like like one kind of creature anyway. Please don't uh, don't don't take me wrong. I'm not supporting any war or any violence. <laughs> I just <laughs> yeah, I just love to like combine the cuteness and the, the war machine together. It's just for my, for fun. Yep, this is another example of like the, <clears throat> the mar marmot. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys know mar marmot. It's one kind of rodents in the field. <laughs> yeah, it just basically climb, climb up the, the tank that I, draw, that I drew. Like the background is so violent, but at the end of the day, the uh, the people who created it is just a cute animal inside a machine. Yep, that's the overall of my work. I actually have a lot of uh, color studies for for myself to keep developing my skill, but you can check it on my website, uh, pongtr.com. I, and I, I could give you guys later to, to shake it out. But yep, this is, I think the five work that I pick is like the overall uh, style that I love to do in my work, which is uh, a stylized 3D related, uh, stylized 3D kind of work that I used to do. You know, for a while there, you had me confused. I thought for sure you love war, but just kidding. <laughs> but, in any case, but, but I think, uh, again, sort of, it harkens back to what I mentioned at the beginning. Unfortunately, we continue to learn over and over that as smart as we think we are, uh, we haven't really progressed past our animal instincts. Uh, and maybe we're even worse than the animal instincts, you know, the, 
yeah. that thing about animals kill, but they only kill them what they need. And uh, we have a habit of going a little further than that. So uh, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, I had a question uh, for you. You know, we, we talked earlier, some, uh, uh, some other artists had mentioned, um, you know, the, we talked earlier about sort of the freedom of thought or the, the, the space to have creativity uh, in the uh, American way of American culture uh, compared to Asian culture. I mean, it's a huge generalization, but we, we talked about that. Just wondering for you, is there, a, is there a, do you feel a difference between being an artist in Thailand and being an artist here? Is the, is the space for your creativity different? Um, or um, yeah, what, what do you think? Yeah, there's, there's some limitation in like Asian culture a little bit in Thailand because our culture, some part of it related to Chinese culture as well. And, and I, I guess maybe most of the like Asian culture has some, some like similar uh, area of like respect and like prohibit something, right? So I, I feel like I feel more, I had more freedom when I was working in US and people kind of appreciate uh, arts more uh, like openly, I would say. Like they're not they're not sticking to just only like one style or that style and that style. They they have more uh, open minded uh, open minded respect and, and and other things. For example, in Thailand, any nudities or any like naked bodies we consider as like oh bad things you shouldn't do that you shouldn't blah 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 but in more uh, western culture they they accept this part better than what it has in thailand or and i think the overall i just feel like people in western appreciate art a little bit more than than people in Thailand. That's may that's might be uh that's might uh, relate to the, the the economy as well. Like uh in my in my country we are a developing country so maybe not every people have access to or even have time <laughs> to appreciate art compared to the modern uh, country that they have more opportunity to appreciate or learn or know what is art or how broad it is. So uh, let me uh, throw it to, to Yumi if you're, if you're there. Um, just any, um, you know, again, you know, I, 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 see, I, I find your art, you know, in your art, uh, Yumi, you, you're kind of expressing sort of an internal state. Uh, here's uh, uh, Pong's art, um, well, more external, but, uh, you know, contrasted, well, just mostly around his creativity and his fascination with cuteness and animals and, and war. Um, what, what are you thinking when you see it? Uh, I think your work is awesome. Like, this is sort of like the work that I was like studying when I was in school because I was doing entertainment art. And so like, this is like, I can really see like, your fascination and your skill at lighting. And like, I can tell that you've studied like done plein air painting and things like that. So I love seeing this sort of work. And um, it really gets me excited to see like the personal art of like entertainment artists too, because like sometimes entertainment art for like a company is really rigid, but I love seeing the sort of um, more like fun and like the personality of um, like artists like this, like I think it's really cool. So. Oh, you know, I forgot to also uh, say something to you, Yumi. Yeah, studi Studio Ghibli, like my whole family, my kids totally grew up on that stuff completely. And I've watched Princess Mononoke, I don't know how many times, about literally probably 20 times. I, I, I believe Princess Mononoke is probably the best movie ever made in all of history. <laughs> and, you know, it's up there and everything else yeah. is out there, right? It's, it's the greatest. Um, in any case, 
I'm just wanting to know if uh, Nisi is ready to join us yet. Uh, so, so Nisi, why don't you go ahead and just uh, tell us about yourself and your work? Hello, everyone. I'm glad to see you and your work. I'm a teacher at Inner Mongolia Unomo University, and my name is Lunis. Mm, my English is also Lunis. I live in Inner Mongolia, China, and uh, I'm a Mongolia, uh, I'm of Mongolian nationality. Due to my work, I'm not a pure artist at the moment, and uh, my primary uh, task is, uh, art, is art education. What I want to say about today's theme is that I think everyone has artistic, uh, artistic talent, but some people may not have uh, discovered a suitable form for expressing themselves. If a person can not be restricted by his identity and uh, existing knowledge, then he may be a very good art expression. Speaking of my own works, my work is uh, watercolor paintings. When I was starting in the Academy of Fine Arts, the painting methods my teacher taught me were very realistic. After graduating, I made some, uh, I made some style and uh, color changes in my works, but it is still difficult to break away from the limitations of thinking that my long-term realistic training has brought to me. For example, we all know that the way of seeing as an artist is very important. And uh, when I look at an object, it is always difficult to break away from the way of singing that the singing that I have learned before in realistic painting. In my heart, I prefer bright color, simple and powerful shapes. This was not allowed by the teacher when I was starting painting. You can't imagine that there was a big gap between Chinese art education when we were in school and now. I hope that our generation can change this situation after becoming teachers. Mm, let me stop here first, uh, hoping to learn and uh, listen to your opinion, uh, opinions. That was, that was beautiful. Um, you know, the struggle to move from what you've been taught to finding mm -hmm. yourself that was really well said and um, um <laughs> thank you that was really good um and I, i'm glad you talked about it because i i was trying to like i i like the 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 sort of the the massive uh the the, the weight of the color that you're using in your artwork so i think you're moving yes. there so uh i and it's um it's good to know how much you've tried to to get to that place. Yes, so, thank um, yeah, th thanks for sharing that. That, that was really great. Uh, Carolyn, what do you want to say to, to uh, Lunisi? I'm also an art teacher. So I have a feeling, a, a very close feeling. Oh, um, very nice, me too. <laughs> you know, and um, I think teaching art's very, and one of the things you said, reminds mm -hmm. me a lot of one of my very favorite quotes from Monet, Claude Monet, <laughs> you are familiar. He said, mm -hmm. and I teach this, I try to give this to my students all the time, not they don't sometimes listen, but this is what he says. And I put it in, uh, in chat. To see, one must forget the name of the thing object you are looking at. Thank you. That is, and I feel um, this, um, that all art, whether you say, you know, it is quote unquote abstract or not, it's irrelevant. We are all um, communicating and seeing and I'm particularly moved by the girl in the middle. 
Ah, I'm very moved by that painting. Mongolian, Mongolian girl. Yeah. Mongolian, yeah. I'm very moved by that painting. I think it's very strong, very powerful, very, yes. very powerful painting um, in it's any fresh. way. Fresh. That reminds yeah. me very much of uh, the color and, and the, the face and the way. It reminds me of Paul Gauguin very much. Yeah. And I love all your paintings. I think they're absolutely beautiful. Um, and I, I'm very, very happy to have seen them and make, meet you as another art teacher. Thank you. Thanks, Carolyn. You, 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 you didn't mean to, but you've made me feel really good too, because that was my favorite <laughs> painting as well. So um, that I, I, it's hard. I'm not as familiar with art. I, I couldn't. Ex I couldn't articulated in my head. Why do I like this one more than that one? I, I can't, can't figure it out, but uh, that, that, is, that is the one that kind of struck me as well. So um, thanks for making me feel good too. <laughs> so uh, I'm, gonna th I'm gonna ask for one more question, but uh, I'm gonna pick one of the, uh, one of the art lift staff. And Arietti, I'm gonna pick you just because I like your name. <laughs> um, <laughs> Arietti, you got you want you got any comments for uh, Lenisi and or, or any of the artists that you've seen? Okay, uh, it's for uh, the um, Professor Lu. Okay, I really like the um, first one and the second one. It's for the like the re restaurant to the picture. Uh, the um, it, the um, the color is uh, very bright and uh, um, it give me the people is uh, like. Um, very um, peace, the peaceful, the feeling, and uh, mm. yeah, I just it's very. I really like you. Uh, I like you how to use the black this color, and it you because you use it very clean. Because somebody use the black is a very dirty uh, to the picture, but you you make the people uh, just make the people feeling very. Um, soft and very clean and uh, everything is very it's very good and for um for the mongering the girl yes it's very powerful the feeling i really like it yeah yeah maybe because i use the watercolor and the chinese ink you know china chinese ink is very clean Color. So this is why it's very special because they use the Chinese ink. And nobody will to think about oh you use you use the Chinese ink or or because uh, every because normally people will think about the first uh, material maybe the color uh, uh you know the uh, the color painting or or the or the mark painting you know so <laughs> if you not use the Chinese <laughs> ink it's very special yeah. and very um good. Mm. Um, to combine the Chinese style and the uh, the Western style, combine them together. The style is very good. Thanks very much. I I would like to uh, thank you everyone here. Uh, I think I'm the luckiest one because I I knew everyone and almost everyone is my close friend. Thank you so much for sp sp supporting our lift and uh, sharing the awesome stories and giving us beautiful inspiration. We do interviewed all the our most of most of the artists today and uh, for future we will post their stories in Chinese and English so uh, if you still want to learn more about the artists you can just go to our websites and check our Facebook group uh, as a foreigner and artist in US for many years I always feel there's a gap between US and Chinese artists um, so in Artlift we interviewed artists and around the world write their life stories in different languages, we help them to sell their arts in other countries. And our lift begin, uh, our, our design team collaborates with artists to create the new forms of art is expression together, uh, which is really cool and fun. I think you guys, if you guys have interested about it, you can just talk with me future. And for, for this conference projects, uh, we only have one goal, make sure the artists can hear from other peers, not just from the artwork descri descriptions, like uh, the tags next to artwork in gallery. And we will hear directly hear the true voice from the artist, which may be an ocean far away from us right now and in the different time zones. But we still can find the connection deep in our hearts. Like, I, I hope you guys 
found that today. And we hope everyone in our community can become friends and we share, enjoy, collaborate together and we help each other. I really appreciate that you're spending nights or morning here and hope you can join future Rlift events. And as we bring more interesting stories and great artworks, um, I think it's time to bring our uh, product director, Sophie, who planned all this. And I know you guys have been emailing with Sophie for a long time. So I think it's a time for Sophie to say hi. Thank you, Luna. And thank you everyone for being here and enjoying our artist community tonight. Uh, even though the world is still suffering the uh, COVID-19, uh, we are grateful to have an event online to connect artists together all around the world. Uh, we will have the artist conference once a month and every time we will make sure it has diversity. Uh, we hope you guys can stay in touch and get inspiration from our community, <coughs> excuse me, from our community, uh, maybe even collaborate in future. Uh, for more information about our community, uh, you can join us on our Facebook group, follow us on Instagram, or join us WeChat group. We will share the newest artist story and the event information there. Mm -hmm. Also, our website is under construction. The new version will launch around the middle of this month. Uh, we already wrote stories from most of you, and we will share them in our new website. Uh, hope you will like it. Uh, for WeChat articles, we plan out a pub, uh, the publishing schedule. Articles will be published starting from January next year. Uh, we will send you the WeChat article link after your story has been posted. Thank you for your patience. All right, hope you enjoyed today's event. Let's um, um, pass it back to Darren. Um, Hong, Carolyn, Lisi, Wenlu, Yumi, um, any, anything you want to add? I just want to say thank you to all of you for the hard work and the foresight you've put into creating this group. I think it's so exciting to meet with artists from, um, I'm, I'm just thrilled. I did not expect to have so much fun. It was really very uh, inspiring. I, I feel get, I feel great just as a result of having been part of this. Uh, Yumi, you wanna, you have anything you wanna add? Uh, no, like just same thing. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is really, uh, awesome. Like, I don't really talk to anyone <laughs> like because of the quarantine. So it's, it's really nice to connect to people um, in this way. So thank you so much for inviting me and organizing this whole thing. It's awesome. Okay, let's see. Um, well, I could go through everyone, but you know, I think we're doing all right. Uh, Luna or Sophie, is there anything you wanted to any questions or anything you wanted to bring up? The, um, I, I, I want to say like, I really miss you, Paul. And I think uh, I thought I'm gonna be really sad after you left uh, San Francisco, but when I saw your pictures with your girlfriends and you, you guys finally like enjoy the happy time. So I feel like, yeah, that's my the, uh, the life, the, 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 yeah, that's, 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 that's what we should have uh, with family, with the, with the lovers or something. So I feel happy for you, but I also think, uh, like I said, uh, San Francisco, San Francisco is always your home, and when, whenever you come back, just stay with us, and we have a spot for you <laughs> forever. I appreciate that, but it is about immigration thing. But okay, I, I will find the uh, opportunity to go back mm -hmm. for sure, or like maybe as a visitor or anything. But I wish to see you guys again for sure. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. thank you very much for arranging this meeting. And thank you for listening listen to me rumbling <laughs> for, for a minute. But yeah, it, it's fun. And it's good to know all the artists here. And yeah, and thank you I for- I think, Pong, we yeah. didn't get a chance to tell you, Pong, how good your work is. Oh, cool. thank you. <laughs> and I thank really you thought much. that your observation of light is very, very good. <laughs> thank you, thank you, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Have a great day. Hey, thank, thank you, you Darren. Yeah, thank Bye. you. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Thank you.